All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, and Pipeliner CRM. And today I am delighted to be joined by Shane Johnson, who is a motivational speaker and Marine Corps veteran who is in Orlando, Florida today. How are you doing? I'm great. The weather is nice. I uh, can't complain. Um, it's not uh, snowing. It's not cold. It's beautiful <laughs> out by the lake, so I'll take it. Yeah, and, and I'm actually here in San Diego, not that far actually from Camp Pendleton, where um, I don't know if you ever spent time there during your, mar your Marine career. I did. I was stationed in Pendleton, and then I lived in Balboa Park for a while, so I'm right. pretty familiar Excellent. with San Diego Excellent. area. Yeah. Right, so um, Shane's one uh, is a, a motivational speaker and sales coach, and he's worked with some of the biggest companies in the world. You know, the likes of you know Red Bull and yeah, GoDaddy, and you know lots of lots of different companies that you would he ever heard about. And Shane, you also do this hike across America every year, where you you hike what is it three three thousand miles to speak to people and to raise awareness and and funds for for veteran awareness homelessness etc that's yeah that's correct as crazy as that sounds yeah we're in our fourth year now uh we actually just had a i had a speaking engagement with the rotary international who's partnering with us this year in the gary sneeze foundation and uh, we talked about our initiative this year where we're doing uh, 1100 miles from new york all the way down to florida i'm doing 12 to 22 miles a day with a 100 pound pack uh, we're speaking in 22 cities, uh, 10 states, um, you're reaching out to military all across the, the East Coast and companies and organizations and uh, you know, homeless sector, so on and so forth. And, uh, and then at the end, I attempt to break the world record for the fastest marathon with a 100-pound pack after I've done the 1,100 miles. Wow. And how, how fast would that be? To break that would be record? less than six and a half hours. It's 100 pounds. Wow. Good for you. 100 pounds. Yeah. I'm tired just listening. I'm actually yeah. so tired. Now just <laughs> it listening. makes me tired talking yeah. about it. <laughs> and and so um, if we're we're going to talk today about you know leadership, whether it's leadership in organizations or self leadership, you know, um, you know, for salespeople or whatever, and how to excel and overcome challenges. And you might ask, okay, so you know, what is what does Shane particularly, uh, you know, why, what qualifies Shane to talk about this? And and when I was going through researching Shane here, um, you've been homeless, you've been broke, you've lost everything. And here's the one, you've died three times, okay? Yeah. I mean, if I was Oscar Wilde, I'd say, you know, once is unfortunate, like three is carelessness or whatever. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting for that three strikes you're out part. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I walk cautiously. Yeah. So just give me a little bit of background about, you know, these these things that happened in your life and how they shaped what you do today. Yeah. So, you know, it's it's always interesting. I think, you know, I, I was having a conversation about leadership this morning with uh, Lake Buena Vista Rotary here in, in, in Disney area. And a lot of people, they asked me that question about leadership. And I, and I said, you know, I think I think those experiences that I went through is a saying I kind of go through a lot when I speak is, you know, we as humans purchase pleasure for our inability to endure pain. And I think what happens is, is that companies, corporate America, you know, just in general, you know, benefit off of our inability to endure pain. And I think that's where the military really gets it. Well, I'll say the Marine Corps anyways, I can speak for them because I didn't serve in the other branches. But I know being in the military, you know, to endure pain is probably the best part because you know that's when you're growing that's when you're doing better it's like making that cold call you don't want to make you know going to do that sales presentation in front of 30 people that you don't want to do that's the part that you should learn to embrace and i think the ones that are successful have figured that part out and most of us know it i just think that we're we go to a lot of speaking engagements and a lot of conferences to maybe find out that that's not actually it when in fact it is yes you do have to go to the gym in order to be healthy you do have to eat right in order to be healthy you do got to make those phone calls. Um, and as a leader, you've got to do it and, and not accept credit for it. You've got to carry the weight of, you know, the burden on your shoulders, continue to move forward and then pass it on to your people. So, um, you know, that all those experiences that I went through at the time did not seem like that. But later it cultivated me into be what I'd like to be, you know, an effective leader, a lead from the front, um, not from a swivel chair. And um, it, it, it was difficult. It was hard. And again, I say that because when I was going through it, I thought, why me? Right. And I think that happens with a lot of entrepreneurs. Sure. You know, you, you go through tough times, you lose a business, you <laughs> the sales aren't where you need to be. People quit. People turn on you. You know, you make bad decisions. However, I think that's the best part, because, you know, when you when you read a book or you watch a movie, you never always look for just the happy part all the time. No. You're looking for the struggle. We're looking for the Rocky. Right. We want the underdog to win. So 
uh, going through those experiences as far as dying three times and being homeless and losing everything, I think I think maybe I was just a little more hard headed than most people. <laughs> but uh, I, I just continue to kind of keep pushing forward. And it really shaped, you know, part of who I am now. And now, you know, it comes to the fact of I think that's the irony of it is, is that I'm running across the country every year. I'm effectively running my businesses. I built three companies that did over 40 million in sales after I was homeless. And I just figured it out. I think that was the light bulb. I just needed to be <laughs> knocked down a couple of times, apparently, in order to really get it. So, so um, that's kind of what shaped it. Yeah. So, so as you go out and talk to people, here, here's something that I struggle with uh, today is that I believe that we live in this um, shortcut culture, right? This everything should be easy. Everything should come easy. And this is, and and this is the perception people because they're being bombarded from all sides that everything should be easy and it should come easy. So how do you help people understand, as you say, that it's not actually it's hard. Like success is hard. It doesn't come easy. And and all these things that you're being told and being bombarded about shortcuts and easy, it's not the reality for ninety nine point nine 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 percent of people. Well, yeah, 100 percent. I mean, we we know it, though. That's the thing is that I I mean, I speak to so many people across the country. I'm fortunate enough to work with a lot of companies. Everybody knows. They already know. They know that it's hard. They just keep thinking that there's something different to say that it's not going to be. And I think that's the key is if you can get them to understand, like, look, the the, the pain is the pleasure. That's the part that you're going to have to in the military. We say embrace the suck, right? (laughs) Embrace the pain. Embrace it. Get through it. Enjoy it. You know, if it ain't raining, you ain't training. So Mm -hmm. it it really comes down to just looking someone in the eye and say, and again, it goes back to knowing your why. Once you know your why, you'll figure out your how, right? Like Simon Sinek says. So define your why. And when you have that true purpose and why, it's like, you know, when you don't have children, you're probably not as apt to want to, you know, get up early. You'll sleep in. Sure. But when you have children, they go to school. You don't have a choice. Mm-hmm. You know, so it pushes you. And then, in fact, you're up, you're moving, you're doing things. So I think it kind of works the same way is, you know, that people need to know. For one, I think it goes back to leadership. A good leader that I feel puts a size 11 boot in your back mm-hmm. because we just got to be pushed. It's just it's just human nature. We have to be pushed. So as a leader, you know, it's our jobs to get out there. But, you know, sometimes it's hard for us because we, you know, you you don't want to step on toes. You don't want to offend people. You don't do things, especially nowadays. And that's what I'm saying, especially nowadays, because I'm I'm 100 percent agree with you. I think people need to be pushed. We all need to be pushed. And, uh, you know, if we all had this phenomenal level of self-motivation, then, you know, we'd all be hugely successful at every stage of our lives. But we always need a push. But again, as as I said, it's we live in a culture now what's it's certainly a, a, a you know popular culture that's pushing back against this idea and it's all, you know, that everything should be almost um you know, very softly, softly. So again, how do you how do you help people strike that balance? Because, you know, there are times when it can't be softly, softly. I, I don't think there is a balance. I mean, you're you're talking to a guy that died three times, was homeless, and runs across the country. There's not a balance. Either you're going to do it or you're not going to do it. And if you're going to be part of a platform that's going to do it, then you're going to see the success at it. You can't you, you can't plant an entire garden and expect it to grow overnight. You've got to put the work in. You've got to clean it. You've got to cultivate it. You've got to work on it. That's just how life works. It's just life cycle. Deal with it. There's there's no soft around it. I don't really think that you see a lot of organizations that become successful. And what I mean by that is making a true impact in the community without having some type of struggle. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, you're looking at people that are homeless. I do a lot. I work a lot with the homeless and I see them struggling and going through and they're still going through it. And people every day take for granted their daily lives with their $5 Starbucks talking about how they didn't get it the way that they wanted it to. And there's people out there going through a lot worse. So, you know, you have to pick a side. It's like dodgeball, right? Mm -hmm. Which side are you going to be on? And ultimately, I want to be on the winner side because I need to provide more because if I don't win, I can't help those homeless people I can't run across the country I can't make an impact so I think it just it's a choice you know it's because everyone you're right not everyone is going to sit on that side and win some people are just gonna you know decide to not do it mm-hmm. I think it's been like that since the beginning of time and I think uh, I mean I'm part of it today I'm part of it, it, it the struggle is perspective right I mean you have perspectives based on on your life and some other people as you said I mean the person who's who's sitting in Starbucks with the five dollar latte you know, uh, bemoaning their station in life has may have a different perspective, and they're not see they're not looking around them and saying, "Well, actually, I have a pretty good life. I could certainly make it better." But if, by sitting here talking about, it, I'm not making it better, right? Well, I think it, it, in general, people have a really low self confidence. 
I think that's what I see more than anything is that people just don't believe enough in themselves. You know, I don't think people are scared of failure. I think they're truly scared of success. Success is scary because what is it like if you actually won? What is it like if you actually could enjoy your life? And I think that if you if that actually happened, people would be lost. They wouldn't know what to do. So they enjoy the drama. They enjoy the problems, though they won't say that out loud. They love to say, oh, it's tough, it's tough, it's tough, especially Americans. Americans are really big on that. We like to justify ourselves by how long we've worked, not by what we've succeeded as, because if we succeed without working, we're stealing. That's how we look at it. But if we work really hard and we have nothing, then we have value. Mm -hmm. And that's a really weird concept. (laughs) And it's funny, it's funny you mention that. There's a couple of funny things in there, which is just saying, yes, uh, I mean, I've lived in America for 21, 22 years now. I originally came from Ireland, and I agree with you, that is, Americans measure everything by how long and how hard they work. You know, back in Ireland, people would sit in the pub and just say, well, those are, you know, I, I'm, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to, right. you know, that system isn't going to break me. I'm going to sit here and, like, talk about how great I am, but I'm not going to do anything about it. So it's funny, different cultural right. perspectives. But I, I th- the part that I think is really fascinating, I do think that most people think that um, fear of failure is the worst thing. And I don't think a lot of people identify that fear of success because I've, I've seen it in my own life. I've seen in other people's lives is absolutely it's where people go, oh, I'm going to do this. And then and then they start thinking about, yeah, but what if it actually works out? Then I'll have <laughs> to make some changes in my life. I mean, it may be all great, but then they like back off it because the status quo just seems more appealing. Well, yeah, failure is lukewarm water. Mm-hmm. It's comfortable because it's in the masses. I mean, it's just easier. It's easier to fail. You know, I, I think so. I think you go through that it, it, there, because then you don't really have to commit, but you can tell everybody that you tried. Right. You know, but if you actually do it, now there's that maintenance, that that, that commitment level, which we're generally not, you know, we don't do as much now as humans. I mean, we're, we're, we're not committed to really anything. Everything is just, you know, eight seconds bounce rate, bounce rate. You know, the second we look at something, we're on to something else. Mm-hmm. You know, but when you succeed, that means you've committed. I think that's where the commitment comes in. I mean, the failure is the easy part. Try, fail, okay, because whether you do really well or you don't do really well, failure comes pretty easy. Um, but when it comes to success, I think once you get there, it's now, oh my gosh, now I got to keep it and I've got to maintain it. Um, and then all the other fun stuff that comes along with it, because you think money is, is what's going to fix it all. And, it, and it's not. And that's when you have to go through stages, um, of your life in order to understand what true success is. So how did you, how did you, um, manage that transition yourself from, you know, things being pretty bad to when you first started to have some level of success? Did you find that uh, at the beginning, did you find that a little daunting being on the other side? Yeah, 100%. So I I think that's probably why I, um, can talk about it so well, because, you know, failure, you know, you go through, my dad used to have this saying, it's a little acronym he would use and he was called EDAB. He would say, every day is a battle, son. And when I was younger, I used to always appreciate that, right? Like everything's a battle, it's a battle, it's a battle, it's a fight, it's a fight. And then I thought, man, that was a really kind of depressing acronym (laughs) when I thought about it because he had endured so much struggle that he thought that that was the norm. And it becomes embedded in you, ingrained in you um, to a point to where it's like you just expect it, right? Like, well, that's just my luck or oh, that's just how things are going to happen. So when it goes well, there's a, a paranoia because you're like, is this real? You have to go through that stage of, okay, uh, is this actually happening? Does this happen to me again? That self confidence comes in place, and then from there you're wondering is someone going to take it because you're finally there and you do enjoy it and you like it. Um, for myself, you know, going from homeless, I, I have to say it was a little different for me because mm-hmm. I was on a mission uh, once that happened because I was fortunate enough to be successful and be a seven figure earner when I was 23 when I got out of the Marine Corps and fell into the mortgage business, and then I built a, a company at 26 and and lost that during the recession in 08, and that's when I really got hit. And then from there, you know, I built back up. So for me, I kind of had a little taste of it early on and knew that the second time around I wanted to attack it. But the first time around um, was crazy because it, first, everybody comes out of the woodworks when you start making money. It's mm-hmm. Everybody needs a loan. People come up with business ideas. You've got family members you never even knew about. Um, and then the next part of it is, is money management. You know, mm-hmm. I come from a poor background and the Marine Corps, you know, I was pulling a trigger. I wasn't you know, managing finances. So when I started to earn quite a bit of income, I didn't really know what to do with it. I will spend, spend it. I knew to do that much. <laughs> um, but I just didn't know how to manage it correctly, you know, and, and to not give more than anything. And then from there, you know, when I got into that success, I was surrounded by a lot of uh, successful people, you know, at the time. And, um, and then when I lost it all, it was a humbling moment. But when I came back the second time, I had a, I had a, a specific focus and was 
it, very laser focused on that. And after that, there was no there was no mercy to that. It was a goal. And then, of course, I had my daughter, which, you know, if you have children, sure. uh, you should anyways. If you do, it, it changes your life life and there's only one thing that matters at that point is is your children yeah no, I, I, could, I couldn't agree more um you know that's the, the way i feel about it too and i do think uh, you know it's such a life-altering um, experience um you know to be a parent but let me also come back to that thing because I, I again i think it's a fascinating one about confidence uh, that you mentioned earlier because i think um you know, people always look at other people and think, wow, you know, they're so confident and I don't feel that great about myself, but everybody else seems so confident, yet most people aren't as confident as they're letting on. But how do you how do you help people overcome that, you know, that barrier and build some confidence in themselves to be able to, to move forward and not to stay stuck in, in cycles of failure? Well, I, you know, I think uh, I earned a... I learned a early lesson when I was younger with my father. So my dad was a correctional officer. He just retired after about 40 years. And you know, when we were younger, we used to break horses. Right. And what my dad would do is we were, you know, it was a single dad. I had, uh, my brother was blind. My mom left us when we were nine, you know, just, you know, just tough stuff, you know, per se. My father was raising, you know, my sister and my brother and I, and um, he used to, to buy horses, you know, the original car salesman. So he'd buy horses. We'd go out there and they'd be two-year-old green horses, right? And so you're talking, you know, these 1,500-pound horses that scary. haven't been ridden. Yeah, they're scary that my dad says, hey, you need to get on that. We need to break it because we need to hurry up and sell it. I bought it for 500. We're going to sell it for 2,500 bucks, but we need to hurry up and get it where you can ride it, you know? I'm like, I don't want to do that. He's like, boy, get up on the horse. Yes, sir. Okay, I get up on the horse. You know, and I got thrown so many times throughout <laughs> my high school tenure that I didn't want anything to do with a horse anymore. But my father, every time I'd hit the ground, bloody my nose or mess up or do something, get back on the horse again, get back on the horse again. So when I got into the Marine Corps, it was kind of the same thing, right? It was mm -hmm. beat up, get back up and do it again. Beat up, get back up and do it again. Just never quit. It's ironic that it was the cover of my second book, which was mm -hmm. Keep Your Feet Moving, yeah. was that no matter what, it's you can be scared. You're going to be scared. It's normal to be scared. You're going to be worried. You're going to be – you're going to lack confidence. That doesn't matter. Just get up and get back on the horse again. Like John Wayne says, right? Courage is being scared to death anyways, but getting up on the horse and riding on. Yeah, exactly. So I, I think that's a great point for anybody who's watching to take a, to take away here that that all of the feelings that you have, the, the fear, the lack of confidence, all of that, those are completely normal feelings and the feelings that everybody else who who has who ended up being successful has had at one time. Um, so don't don't think that they're that it's only you and think well I'm too lacking in confident or I'm too afraid you know other people have had those and to your point you just got to put one foot in front of the other and make a start right yeah I mean you know I, I speak all the time and even still just a little bit I sometimes get nervous you know mm -hmm. just because I want to make sure to do a, am I going to do a great speech but that's never going to stop me I'm not going to quit you know I've been knocked down way too many times to to allow something like that to stop. You know, but I want to make a point with that with that comment that you said. I think, mm -hmm. you know, it's I think what it comes down to is as there needs to be more leaders, right? Like yeah. more leaders need to do this more. We need to carry the burden, push more, show people, guide them, and give them a little nudge because they may not thank you when they're kicking and screaming, but you know, mm -hmm. once they actually see a little bit of success and some benefit from it, and, and there's a, there's a positive side. So it's more about the leaders. We don't have to second guess ourselves as leaders. We're going to make mistakes, but we just we just got to do it and show people it's okay. It's, it's why I do what I do when it comes to the runs. That's why I carry 100 pounds. You know, why why not just go and speak to people? Why would I run 22 mm -hmm. miles a day, run marathons, run ultra marathons while I do it, carry 100 pounds, break a world record, speak, you know, work on coming? Why would I do that? Because I want to show people that it can be done and a normal person can do it. You know, so so can you, right? It's just to make the rest of us look like slackers. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's basically what it comes out to. Yeah. No, but it's a it's a, it is a great it is a great point there. And I do agree about the leadership part as well. It's a great point because we need we need more strong leaders because I do think that things have gotten so kind of out of whack now where we're spending a lot of time focusing on things that don't really matter instead of focusing on yeah we all need to push every so often we all need to be we all need to be helped to move forward and the leader has got to do that and it may be unpopular and it may be out of slightly out of sync with what the culture is trying to tell us right now but ultimately as you say the the companies that are successful, the leaders that are successful are the ones who are able to get everybody to move forward when it's it's at the hardest point, right? 
Well, yeah, you've got to define your mission objective and then you've got to go from the front. I mean, I had a client the other day that we were working with and it was funny because I said, listen, you need to make 25 prospecting calls this week and get a hold of them. Well, I tried and no one answered. So I said, okay, let's do it right now. Right in front of them, right in the middle of a coaching session, went ahead and prospected 25 and I started cold calling, acting as their assistant on their behalf. Mm -hmm. First three calls, set an appointment. And then it was kind of like that look like, you know, like you knew this was going to happen just because I was going to do it, you know, more than anything. Sure. And I think as a leader, it shows them like, look, it can be done. We're doing it right here. I'm doing it with you. Now your turn um, mm -hmm. versus just sitting back in a really nice suit and telling them, well, when I used to make phone calls yeah. and I, I don't I don't think that's the way that a leader should a leader should sit right in the middle of a bullpen, right in the middle of the office, come down, engage. I mean, in the Marine Corps, those are the ones that we respect the most. Mm -hmm. Right. Not the ones that make decisions from swivel chairs, but the ones that get in there in the field with us and say, listen, I'll outrun you. I'll outdo it because I'm the leader I'm supposed to now come with me and let's make it happen. And I think that's that that's what we need more of. We need that lead from the front type mentality uh, so that people are more than welcome to follow because that's what you're supposed to do until you get the opportunity to lead. Yeah, that's fantastic. Listen, we're bumping up against the end of the time, but that's fantastic. Um way to end the interview. So before we go, Shane, if you want to tell people a little bit more about yourself, how they can find out more about you and get in contact with you. Yeah, absolutely. So anytime you want to find me, you can search me on all social media and websites at tshanejohnson.com. Um, and then all my handles are tshanejohnson, pretty easy. Uh, so from there, you can give me a buzz if you need speaking engagements or coaching opportunities. And uh, that's pretty much it. Pretty easy. Great. All right, my name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. This has been another Expert Insight interview. See you all for another one soon. Thank you.